Here at Sebring, we got a chance to go fly the Aero Trek, and this one's the A240. You see the uh, model number right down here. A240, just to clarify, means the tricycle geared version of this airplane. There's also an A220 model, and that's a tail dragger. The Aero Trek has been in the market since just about the beginning, represented by a gentleman named Rob Rollison, who has experience with many other companies in his history. He's sampled a lot of different airplanes, and he's a very careful and deliberate person, and finally arrived at this one as his best choice. This is an aircraft that comes out of the Czech Republic. It's a fairly small company, but a very steady company with the same employees over many years, and they pride themselves on doing the job correctly and not worrying about being the biggest company in the business. But this one has found a ready market and there's a lot of reasons why. So let's cover a few of those things. First of all, this airplane is kind of rare in the community anymore for having folding wings. You might be able to see if I close the door here, there's a small pin up here. I don't know if the camera's even picking up that detail, but that's one of the things that you do, a very few number of steps, and in literally a matter of a few minutes, you can fold these wings aft and they go right back in the position they are. They don't have to pivot down or anything like that. But this is a way of doing two things. You can bring it in a trailer like the one you see behind us here. It trailers very well and they've always done that. And in fact, this particular air came, aircraft came down in the, in the trailer. It's gonna be flown home, but it's capable of doing that very easily. The second thing is, is it takes up a lot less room in a hangar. Uh, most pilots are aware that hangar space on airports uh, can often be difficult to obtain and there may be a waiting list. There are some airports where that's not the case, but many airports do have are challenged that way. And so a folding wing airplane means you take up a very small amount of space, about the size of a car, and that means you can put lots of them in a hangar or maybe alongside another aircraft that doesn't have that capability. So that's one of the big benefits to the Aerotrack. Also, while the door is closed, you can see here, this is just an immense piece of, uh, of uh, Lexan, uh, clear Lexan that you can see through quite easily. It has kind of a minimal structure around it um, so that it gets great visibility. And you probably can't see in the camera eye too well, but it's got a full skylight, goes all the way back to what's called a turtle deck back there. And all of that is wide open, so you get tremendous visibility out of this aircraft. Really quite exceptional. At my height, I'm about average height. If you're a real tall guy, I guess you might be challenged in some ways, but for all of us of average height or slightly above average height, uh, very easy when I turn, when I'm sitting in the seat and turn my head to the side, I'm looking underneath the wing. So I've got great side visibility, great forward, great aft, and above me to see traffic when I'm in a turning environment, no problem at all. It's really nice that way. But to the old ultralight pilot in me, there's another feature I like. At speeds below about 70 miles an hour, you can pop open the doors and you can have them both open and you want. And you can just fly it like this if you like and it's really quite nice on a pleasant day. Or with a fairly short amount of effort, you can just remove the whole door and fly it with no doors on at all if you want. So let's go in, so let, let me talk a little bit about construction of the airplane. This one is an all, just like you can see on the door here, this is a welded steel fuselage covered with fabric. Of course it uses some composite parts up here and on the ones that don't have the big tires on them, this one has some big uh, Tundra tires on it, which is real nice for rough field operation and so forth. And there are no wheel pants offered with these big tires. But if you get the smaller tires, you can have wheel pants and, and the rest of that on it. And except for those composite parts, this is an all st welded steel fuselage fabric covered. That includes the wings as well. Now there's a solid surface to the leading edge, but all the rest of it back here is all fabric. The control surfaces are fabric. And that's one way this airplane stays very light. And light is good in these kind of light aircraft because it means they'll perform better. This one uses the Rotax engine and they offer a couple of different models of that. But with the most commonly chosen one, the 100 horsepower ULS engine, uh, that's the carbureted version, uh, this airplane will perform quite nicely and uh, its takeoff is, is very, very short, in the neighborhood of about 100 feet, and it's off the ground and flying. In many ways, this, this airplane is an ideal choice for a lot of people, and one reason why that's true is because it has a great price point. Substantially under $100,000 for a ready-to-fly airplane, looks just this good. Uh, these folks, I said, this small operation, they're very careful about how they do things, and they're all nicely executed. They're basic airplanes. They're not all fancy interior and sleek composite exteriors and so forth. 
Uh, but you know what? If you're going to go enjoy yourself in the air, you can do a lot of that in this airplane. So the construction is completely normal, uh, conventional, and that means you can get it repaired almost anywhere. If you do have a oh, hangar rash or one of those kinds of things, this airplane will not be difficult to get repaired, and you can do that almost everywhere. So inside, you see it's side-by-side -side seating. They're nice, comfortable seats. They're fabric-covered. Uh, but, you know, in many conditions, that's going to be very comfortable. Dual joysticks in it, dual rudder pedals, and a center handbrake that's mounted on the instrument panel. Uh, and uh, this airplane, uh, you can probably tell by the nose wheel and how it looks down there, this will swivel quite tightly, so you're not going to have any problem maneuvering on the ground, even without differential braking. But it is a steerable nose wheel, as you see. By the way, when you fold the wings back, it just made me think of it, uh, there are some controls you, you do disconnect. And so obviously when you set back up from a folded wing, you're going to want to make sure you have an exact process to make sure nothing is wrong there. But uh, a lot of people don't ever use that capability, even if they buy it that way, but it sure is handy in some situations, certainly if you want to trailer it. And I mentioned hangerage. Well, if you're having trouble getting a hangar uh, at your local airport, why not buy a trailer? Now you got something you can carry it in and store it in. So that could work two ways for you. So I'm going to stick my head inside here just to remind myself about the inside of the airplane here. Uh, but one of the ways this airplane is kind of neat is it uses uh, a fairly conventional looking panel with some analog instruments. And this particular one has a, oh, about a four inch square AVMAP GPS that will uh, provide a lot of, uh, it has its own GPS system as well and uh, gives you a backup to the other one that's in there. But the great big instrument in the center is an iPad. It will accommodate the 9.7 inch iPad. That's the one that has always been the largest until the company came out with a slightly larger one. But that fits in there and now it fits in horizontally. It used to be vertical and they made some adjustments and now it fits in horizontally. Rob in this particular airplane uses the Wing X Pro but there are several other ones uh, that he could be using and that gave a beautiful display of everything you need uh, and made this airplane it keeps it within that price point because an iPad and a device like eye level or something to supply data to that iPad the iPad will work pretty well on its own but if you want to have really the top-notch stuff you get something like an eye level uh, which they come in several different uh, configurations and with the iPad and the level, you're in well under $2,000 for a high-end, basically, digital instrument inside the aircraft that you can pull out and take inside and flight plan or watch movies or whatever you like. Check your email. Okay, uh, in the center, uh, in the, between the two seats, there's a couple of controls that are, if I was in the right seat, there would be a couple of controls that would be right down here, and they are the flap control, which has a big round knob on it, so you could just reach down there and feel it without looking and pull the flaps on. They are an infinite flap, that is, any setting you put, and the reason why they can do that is you see the ailerons on this airplane are separate and distinct from the wing. That means... Uh, they can function and do function as flapperons, meaning they serve the purpose of both flaps and ailerons at the same time. So that flap control can adjust those flapperons to any level you want, but there are some markings on there so you know where half and full is. We used half for takeoff, half for landing. If you had uh, conditions where you had a short runway or something, you could use 30 degrees of flaps. Uh, but Rob Rollison, whom, with whom I flew, said he rarely does that and never uses them for takeoff because they're more drag than they are uh, lift. So 15 degrees of flaps for takeoff enhances your lift a little bit. Right alongside that is a trim control. Uh, and the trim is also, uh, very, like the flaps, a very effective device. And uh, while, while the controls are nice and light, I'll come back to that in a second, you can use the, uh, if you've got full flaps out and you're trying to just loiter along at 40, 50 miles an hour, which you can do all day in this airplane, it's really nice for just sightseeing, uh, then you want to have some trim on, and that's easily reached down there. And it's got a different shaped handle, so your hand alone, tactically, can tell which you've got a hold of, so you're not pulling on the wrong one. Another control I want to mention in here, because he's got this in it, and he likes to use these, it's called a vernier control. If you don't know what that is, it's a throttle, and most throttles are push or pull, or pivot and pull, or whatever, whatever it is they do, but they're direct mechanical action. A vernier is a knob you can twist. And you can also push it in by pushing a button. You can full in or full out at any time you need that. So you can have it right away. But a vernier control allows you to make very precise motions 
on the throttle position, plus it holds it in position so it doesn't tend to creep on you. I love vernier control. It's something that used to be a high-end extra on certain airplanes. Those devices, uh, those uh, components are not so expensive anymore. He uses them all the time on this very reasonably priced airplane. So while I mentioned control systems here, I want to talk about something else, uh, some changes that this company has made. This design looks familiar to a lot of people, and indeed there are a few aircraft that look vaguely like this one. Most of them have changed over time, and this one has two, but they all emanated from a design called the Avid Flyer that's no longer produced or in business, and from a very talented designer, Dean Wilson, who created this thing. When he did, he made an airplane that always exhibited very nice, crisp handling, uh, they would really, uh, they would really dot around, dodge around the sky very nicely, but they were often a little light on the uh, longitudinal stability. Th they would kind of yaw around a little bit, and if you were erratic on your controls, uh, y you wouldn't lose control of it, but you wouldn't be as comfortable as you might be. This company in 2012 set about making some significant changes to it. What they did was they enlarged the vertical tail, and they incorporated a rudder centering system, basically a spring-loaded thing that brings it back to the center. Now that doesn't resist your movement. The controls are very nice in this. Small amount of motion and not very much pressure, pounds of pressure, in order to control either the rudder pedals or the stick. It's very nice that way. And they've always had that, but they were that, they had that yaw problem. That is virtually gone away. I would say it is gone away now with the changes they made to it. So congratulations to AeroPro, the manufacturer, and their design team for creating that situation that made it so nice. Really very pleasant. So that change they made to the tail created something that most people uh, in my game refer to as control harmony. This airplane has some of the nicest control harmony I've experienced in recent memory. Uh, the amount of pressure and the amount of movement on the rudder pedals is kind of matched up with the amount of movement and the amount of pounds of pressure needed to control the stick. That just makes life easier and you adapt to it quicker and it's one of the reasons why this airplane is such so nice to fly and so easy to land. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about um, if, if you're excited by what you're seeing here and what you've heard, uh, maybe you want one of these things. And I told you the price is very agreeable, but does that mean it's a long wait to get them? Right now, they're saying about five months delivery. And that's been fairly consistent because Rob Rollison is very good at planning ahead and coordinating with the factory, and they're responsive enough that he doesn't have to have orders in a year ahead of time in order to uh, get the products that he wants. So he can bring these things in steadily, there are more than 100 of them flying in the U.S. There are more than 500 of them flying around the whole world. They're in many other countries, but the United States is now the biggest market for this particular airplane, the biggest single market, not bigger than all the other ones put together or anything like that. So let's talk a little bit about the performance of the airplane. As you might be able to tell, you know, with, with dual struts and especially with the big tires out, uh, and these do not come with fairings, as I mentioned, this is not going to be the fastest airplane in the business, and you might already have concluded that. However, it's pretty speedy. Uh, this will cruise along at 110, 115, that's miles an hour now, not knots. Uh, so about 100 knots or a little over 100 knots it'll go. Uh, at, at that's at a modest cruise. It'll, it'll go a little faster if you've got the power maxed out, but most people don't choose to fly that way. So if you've got it at about 5,200 RPM, which is the number we saw, you're going to see about 110 to 115. That's miles an hour. Um, and a nice cruising speed will get you across the country very nicely. It's also capable of going quite slowly, and when we brought it down, we were getting down into, this is again miles an hour, we were getting down into the, into the 40s, even, in, even down into the 30s as we approached stall, but a very nicely, uh, uh, very capable of flying very slowly, which again is a good reason why it's such an easy landing airplane. Good controls, I mentioned that, and slow speeds, you put those two together and you've got an airplane that's easy to land plus the good visibility out of it so you can see where you're at next to the runway. All good stuff. When we did a series of stalls in this airplane, uh, we aggravated them in just about every way I can think of, and uh, our in-flight video will verify what I'm saying, but all the stalls were extremely mild, and in a turning stall where we would get the nose up while the wings were significantly banged, the tendency was for the airplane just to go back to level flight without any pilot input, and that pretty much can be said for the stall response as well. Even holding the stick full aft and controlling it just slightly with the rudder pedals to keep it from wandering, because once it gets up nose high enough, airplane kind of searches for something more than what you're giving it. 
Uh, but even so, without any effort of stall recovery, the airplane just kind of wanted to bob back to get to normal. If you didn't keep fighting it, you're instantly flying again. Uh, of course, you'll have a higher sink rate while you're doing that, but that's to be expected. So that's a lot of information about the Aerotrack A240, Tricycle Gear A220, Tail Dragger. Um, essentially the same airplane as I mentioned. We told you a lot of stuff about it, but you know what? People always have more questions, or if we've been that convincing, maybe you just want to get on the horn and order one up. You can find this company at aerotrek.aero. And you can find more about this particular airplane and lots of others in affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for coming along in the air with us in the Aerotrek here at Sebring.